right, this is day four and our last day of notes for conics. Today we are going to be looking at the general form of conics equations, how we can look at it and identify what type of conic we have, and then rewriting it in the standard form, which is what we've been learning um, in the past three days of conics. So the general form of our conic equation is ax squared plus cy squared plus dx plus ey plus f equals zero. So this is like if we took our conic equation, we foiled and expanded everything out completely, this is the uh, general form. That's how we get to that. So we're going to be working backwards to put it back into standard form. Now, we can look at just our x squared and y squared terms in this form of the equation to identify what type of conic we have. Now, if only one variable is squared, meaning I don't have x squared or I don't have y squared, that tells me that this is a parabola, okay? If both are squared, meaning I have an x squared and a y squared term, we look at their coefficients. So we look at a and we look at c to tell us what type it is. If they are the exact same, meaning they're both four, they're both five or so on, that means we have a circle. If they are different but have the same sign, meaning they're both positive or they're both negative, we have an ellipse. And if they have opposite signs, meaning one is positive, one is negative, that means we have a hyperbola. So let's practice identifying those together. Starting here on number one, I have an x squared and a y squared term, which means it's not a parabola, so now I need to look at my coefficients. I have four and one. They're not the same, so that rules out circle, but they're both positive, which means I've landed on ellipse. Let's look at number two. I only have an x squared term, which means it meets my first test, and it is a parabola. On number three, I have x squared and y squared, and those coefficients are both positive one, which means I have a circle. Okay. Then on number four, I have negative x squared and positive nine y squared. That's a negative and a positive coefficient, which means they're opposite, and that gives me a hyperbola. So all you're looking at is the coefficients on your x squared and your y squared terms. Now, in order to change these equations back into standard form, we have to review completing the square. So if you've forgotten that, I'm going to do a quick review. All right, if I have an equation such as this, the first thing that I am going to do is move my constant to the other side. I'm going to move that 3. Now I'm left with x squared minus 4x equals negative three. Completing the square means I want to have a trinomial that was the result of a perfectly squared binomial, meaning x plus or minus a number squared. So looking at what I have here, I have x squared minus four x. So if this was gonna have come from a squared binomial, I would have taken x plus or minus half of the coefficient on my um, x term. Well, half of negative four is negative two. So if I'm saying this came from x minus 2 squared, when I FOIL that out, I'm going to have gotten x squared minus 4x plus 4. So I'm completing the square by adding in that 4 to make it a squared binomial. And then if I add it on the left, I also need to add it on the right. Okay, so we've completed the square on the left, and now on the right, I'm left with the number 1. Okay, That's completing the square. One more type of example I want to show you is when we have um, a coefficient that we can factor out. Um, so again, first thing I want to do is move that 280 to the other side. And so now I have negative 4x squared minus 40x equals 280. Now, looking at both of these, I can factor out a negative 4 from both of them. And that leaves me with x squared plus 10x. So again, I'm completing the square, meaning if I wanted this to be the result of a squared binomial, that negative 4 would still be out there. That would be x plus half of 10 is 5. So I'm looking at x plus 5 squared. The third term that completes that square is 5 squared, which is 25. Now, the thing about when I'm adding it to the right side is that I need to redistribute that negative 4 that I factored out. So I'm going to actually be adding negative 100 on the right because 25 times negative 4 is negative 100. And so as a result, I'm going to have 180 on the right side. And that will be completing the square. So we're going to be doing that some more as we continue on with our notes. But that's a quick refresher in case you needed that. 
And let's go on down to number five. Again, I'm not going to do every single example on this set of notes, but I'm going to do one of each type of conic. So let's start with number five. I only have an x squared, which means this is a parabola. And because it's an x squared, that tells me that this is going to be a vertical parabola. And then remember, that standard equation for a parabola is x minus h squared equals 4p times y minus k. So I need to get my equation back into that form. So all my x's are on the left and everything else is on the right. So the first thing I'm going to do is move the y and the 14 over. So x squared minus 8x equals negative y minus 14. Okay, now I need to complete my square. Looking on the left, I have x squared minus 8x. So if that was going to have been a squared binomial, it would be x minus 4 squared. Half of negative 8 is negative 4. So the third term that completes that square is 16. If I add it on the left, I also have to add it on the right. And so what I end up with on the right is negative y plus 2. Now, this is still not quite my correct form because, remember, I need 4p times y minus k. I don't have negative y as part of my equation. So what I'm going to do is factor out that negative. x minus 4 squared equals negative y minus 2. And that is my standard form of my parabola. Okay, now let's graph it. Um, I know my vertex is going to be at 4, 2. So there's my vertex, and I need to find p. So this negative 1 is equal to 4p, which means that p is negative 1 fourth. The negative tells me that this parabola is going to be opened down, and the 1 fourth tells me how far away my directrix and focus are from that vertex. So my directrix is going to be 1 fourth above. It's really, really close. And my focus is going to be 1 fourth below. And then I have a parabola opening down. Now, let's look at number six. On number six, I have an x squared and a y squared. One is positive, one is negative, so that tells me that this is a hyperbola. Now, remember, the equation for a hyperbola is x minus h squared over a squared minus y minus k squared over b squared is equal to one. Now, your, um, remember, this would be for a horizontal hyperbola. For a vertical hyperbola, your x and your y are switched around. You will know which goes where depending on which of your x or your y is negative. If x was the negative term, then you would have a vertical hyperbola and they would be swapped. But because y is negative, I know that this is a horizontal hyperbola. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is move my 9 to the other side, and I'm going to get my x terms and my y terms grouped together. So I'm going to have x squared minus 4x minus y squared minus 6y equals positive 9. Now, on my x's, I don't have any um, common factors in the coefficients to take out, but on my y's, I can factor out a negative 1, so I'm going to do that. So I've got x squared minus 4x minus y squared plus 6y equals 9. Now I need to complete the square for both my x and my y. So looking at my x, if this was going to have been a squared binomial, that would be x minus 2 squared, meaning what completes the square is positive 4. If I add it on the left, I have to add it on the right. Then on my y's, if this was going to have been a squared binomial, that would be y plus 3 squared. So the term that completes that square is 9. However, when I'm adding it on the right, I need to redistribute that negative. So we're going to be adding negative 9 onto the right. So here I've completed the squares on the left, and then that's going to be equal to 4. 9 plus 4 minus 9. So this still doesn't look like my standard form because I need this to be equal to 1. So the way that I achieve that now is by dividing everything by 4. So we have x minus 2 squared over 4 minus y plus 3 squared over 4 is equal to 1. And so there's the standard form for my hyperbola. Now let's go ahead and graph it. My center is going to be at 2, negative 3. My vertices are going to be 2 away on the left and the right. My covertices are 2 away on the top and the bottom. If I draw my central rectangle, that's going to help me plot my asymptotes. And the last thing that I need before I draw my curves is my two foci. And remember, for a... Hyperbola c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, which is 8. The square root of 8 is about 2.8. So my foci 
are going to be about here and here. And then we already said that this is horizontal, so I'm going to be drawing my curves that open on the left and on the right. Good deal. All right, let's go on to the next side. On number seven, I've got an x squared and a y squared. They both have a coefficient of one, which tells me that this is going to be a circle. And remember, the standard form for a circle is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. So the first thing that I'm going to do is move this 17 to the other side and group my x terms and group my y terms. So I've got x squared plus 10x. I've got y squared plus 2y equals negative 17. Now I'm going to complete the square for both of these. I have x squared plus 10x. If that came from x plus 5 squared, what completes that square would be 25. If I add it on the left, I have to add it on the right. Then looking at my y terms, I've got y squared plus 2y. That would have come from y plus 1 squared, which means that 1 completes that square. And then I add another 1 over here. So I've completed both of my squares, and now I have on the right side negative 17 plus 25 plus 1. That leaves me with 9. And so now we already have our correct form for this equation of a circle. So that means that my center is at negative 5, negative 1. And my radius, if my radius squared is 9, that means my radius is 3. So I'm going to go up 3, down 3, left 3, and right 3. Okay, and then I'm going to connect those dots as best I can to make my circle. All right, on to number eight. Um, I've got both positive x squares and y squares, which means the signs are the same, so this is an ellipse. Then remember, the equation for an ellipse is x minus h squared over, it could be a squared or b squared, plus y minus k squared over a squared or b squared. It depends on if you have a vertical or horizontal ellipse. Remember, um, a is always the bigger number. So let's take a look at what we have here. First thing I'm going to do is move that 35 over and group my x's and my y's. I've got 4x squared plus y squared plus 2y equals 35. Now, I don't have any other x terms, so this one is going to stay 4x squared. I don't have to complete the square here. However, for my y's, um, I do have a 2y here, which means I'm going to complete that square. So 4x squared plus, that would have come from y plus 1 squared meaning 1 completes the square, add that on both sides, and I get that this is equal to 36. Now, again, I need this to be equal to 1 to be the correct form for the equation of an ellipse, which means I'm going to divide by 36 on both sides. 4 over 36, that does simplify to x squared over 9. And then the y term does not simplify. And so here's the equation of my ellipse. My center is at 0, negative 1. Um, this is a vertical ellipse because 36 is the bigger number. So my vertices are going to be 6 above and 6 below. My co-vertices are going to be 3 to the left and 3 to the right. Then I need to get my foci. And for an ellipse, remember, c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. So that's going to be 27. The square root of 27 is, should be less than 6, 5.2. So just ever so slightly between 5 and 6. Then I can connect my four points. And there is my ellipse. All right. And that is it for our conics note.